I'd like to welcome each one of you. Thank you for coming. This morning my, when I came in, I was informed that we got some water damage. So some of the bulletins are soaked. It came in uh, on this wall, just where the praise team stands. And also some hymnals are wet. Hopefully uh, we can recover them, but maybe it will be an insurance claim. But anyway, it reminds us that the waters of baptisms are all around us, right? And this is what we have to focus on. And so the next person came to me and said, we need more wine. <laughs> and so I thought, well, maybe this is the reason why Jesus said, I have come to bring fire on earth. That's uh, what I'm going to preach about today, about fire and division. And um, one more thing before I start, or maybe before we start, um, Lexi is in Howard. She doesn't, that, that's, that will not be a normal thing, but Howard is helping us out a lot of times when the pastors were gone. Um, Pastor, Rick, Pastor Rick Center did do our funerals. So um, he's on vacation, and so we sent Lexi over to Howard. But we had a really great week. Um, Lexi and her team had a wonderful vacation Bible school. And um, I think Alicia, are you here? Here? Please rise. Come on. <laughs> I'm so impressed. Um, Lexi and Alicia did build a whale, an inflatable whale. It's how, how long is it? 10 feet, 15? What? 25 feet long. It is in the youth room, right? Lex and I had our first fight. <laughs> she wouldn't um, respect my authority. <laughs> I told her we need to have that rail here because people have to see um, how that looks like. Um, you know, the kids can go into it. It's really amazing. It took you 10 hours to build it, right? So please take the time and go later after that worship into the youth room 
and just look at it. If you want to sense or if you want to get a feeling, how is it to be Jonah? This is it. It's really amazing. So thank you. <laughs> Please rise and uh, join me for the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the creator of wind and rain, field and ocean, the bread of life coming down from above, the power at work within us and this world. Amen. Before God and in the company of our sisters and brothers, let us confess our sin. God of glory, God of peace. We confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. We have thought better of ourselves than others. We have told lies, said hurtful things, acted in ways we wish we could take back, and looked the other way when action was needed. In your mercy, O God, forgive us, cleanse us, and heal us. For the sake of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. Everything has become new. In Christ you are a new creation. Your sins are taken away and you are made new. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ has forgiven you. Amen. The, the peace of the Lord be with you all. You may move around and share God's peace and God's joy. The opening song today is Cry of My Heart, number 158, Cry of My Heart. And again, I'm sorry, does everybody have a bulletin? No? Um, yes. Some, have, some people have a Saturday night one. It is because <laughs> the only reason why we run out is uh, because they are wet, they, they are soaked. So please share some bulletins There's if you can. We have some here? Okay. There are some wet bulletins o over there if you want to have some. But they are not too bad. You can use them. So please, if you need one, just get one over there.
God be with you all. And also with you. Please join me for the prayer of the day, which is found in your celebrate insert. O oh God, judge eternal, you love justice and hate oppression, and you call us to share your seal for truth. Give us courage to take our stand with all victims of bloodshed and greed, and following your servants and prophets, to look to the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated, and we are going to receive the offerings. While we sing, we give thanks, number 52. The first reading this morning is Jeremiah 23, chapter 23, verses 23 to 29. Because Jeremiah preaches the unpopular message of God's judgment, he suffers rejection. Today's reading distinguishes between the true prophet like Jeremiah, who speaks God's word, and the false prophets who mislead the people through dreams. One is like wheat, the other like worthless straw. Am I a God nearby, says the Lord, and not a God far off? How, who can hide in a secret place so that I cannot see them, says the Lord? Do I not fill heaven and earth, says the Lord? 
I have heard what the prophets have said, who prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. How long? How long will the hearts of the prophets ever turn back, those who prophesy lies and who prophesy the deceit of their own heart? They plan to make my people forget my name, but their dreams that they tell one another, just as their ancestors forgot my name for Baal. Let the prophet who has a dream tell the dream, but let the one who has my word speak my word faithfully. What has straw in common with wheat, says the Lord? Is not my word like fire, says the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks a rock in pieces? The word of the Lord. Our second reading is taken from Hebrews chapter 11, verses 29 through chapter 12, verse 2. The author of Hebrews presents us with rich stories of faith in a long list of biblical heroes. We find examples of trust in God that enable them to face the trials of life faithfully. In addition to this cloud of witnesses, we have Jesus, the perfect model of faithful endurance. By faith, the people passed through the Red Sea as if it were dry land, but when the Egyptians attempted to do so, they were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after they had been encircled for seven days. By faith, Rahab, the prostitute, did not perish with those who were disobedient because she had received the spies in peace. And what more should I say? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms and administered justice, obtained promises, shut the mouths of lions, quenched raising fire, escaped the edge of the sword, won strength out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight. Women received their dead by resurrection. Others were tortured, refusing to accept release in order to obtain a better resurrection. Others su suffered mocking and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned to death. They were sawn in two. They were killed by the sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, persecuted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains and in caves and holes in the ground. Yet all of these, though they were commended for their faith, did not receive what was promised since God had provided something better so that they would not, apart from us, be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight, and in the sin that clings so closely, let us run for let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. <clears throat> the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the reading of the gospel. The Gospel today is taken from chapter 12 in the Gospel of Luke. Jesus said, I came to bring fire to the earth. How I wish it were already kindled. I have a baptism with which to be baptized, and what stress I am under until it is completed. Do you think that I have come to bring peace to earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, five in one household will be divided, three against two and two against three. They will be divided, father against son and son against father, mother against daughter and daughter against mother, mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. Jesus also said to the crowds, When you see a cloud rising in the west, you immediately say, 
it's going to rain. And so it happens. And when you see the south wind blowing, you say, there will be scorching heat. And it happens. You hypocrites, you know how to interpret the appearance of earth and sky. But why do you not know how to interpret the present time? The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated, and um, I'd like to ask the children to come forward while we sing Jesus Loves Me. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, Sorry. but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. Good morning. I'm so glad that you're here. Did you listen? Did you have a chance to hear what Jesus was saying today? What did he talk about? You know, when you look at that, what did he talk about? Fire, right? He talked about fire. And when you look at that, what do you think what it is? How does this look like? Um, a burnt wood. Wow, you are really smart. It looks like something that was left behind by fire, right? And I need you. Please, you are my assistant today. I need you. <laughs> anyway, now we have a member in this congregation who's, well, whose relative's house was hit by lightning. And this is the remaining front porch. It's amazing, right? Lightning can be really powerful. So it left everything uh, like burnt wood. Anyway, the reason why I say this, Jesus said that he will bring fire on earth. That's a pretty scary thing, but it doesn't have to. I think when Jesus says that he brought fire, he talked about the fire of his love, that he wants to be kindled in our hearts. And so I'm just wondering, did you ever have a fire pit in your backyard? Or when you went camping, do you have a fire pit? So what do you need to, to make it burn? If you want to have a fire, you need wood, right? And then what, what do you do with the wood? You put it together, right? Put it on the floor, and then you have to kindle it, right? And then, is it like this, this here, like this lamp? It will, oh, does it burn forever and ever and ever? No? What's happening to the fire? It goes out? Why? It doesn't burn forever and ever and ever? There's not enough wood to make it? Wow, that's amazing. So you know that makes me think, I don't know if you know that expression, I am on fire. Did you ever hear that? People are on fire for Jesus, for instance. Did you ever hear that? It means that we are passionate about Jesus. And so how do we keep that fire burning in our heart? What do we have to do? Do we have to have wood? Or do we have to do something else? How do we keep that fire burning? The one thing that we could do is, right, we could come here and worship. I have one at my house. You have one at your house? In the big Great. So ke keep that in mind. Our task is, Jesus is asking us to keep the fire for Jesus burning. And we do this by praying to him, by talking to him, by coming to worship, by serving others, by talking to other Christians, and by learning what Jesus wants us to do. Should we pray? Dear Father, I thank you so much for your word. Your word is like a fire that can 
um, grow in our heart. So please help us to keep that fire alive so that we can be an instrument of your love wherever we go. Amen. Thank you. Jingle change. Oh, yeah, we are going to have jingle change. It's over there. The pots are there. how to keep the fire going, right? Thank you. Thank you for your help. God's grace and peace to you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. What a teaching we have been giving today. Let me read it to you one more time and let's ponder what it means. I, Jesus, have come to bring fire on the earth. And how I wish it were already kindled. And then he continued saying, do you think that I came to bring peace? Yes, I do. No, I came to bring division. Jesus talks about two things, fire and division. I think it's for, fair to say that those are words spoken in really, really difficult times about even more difficult times to come. Times when to speak the name of Christ would be judged either as treason or judged as insanity. Times when to live by this way the Christian way would certainly invite criticism, scorn, ridicule, anger, pity, persecution, and maybe even death. Times when families would be divided by that name called Jesus. The question for me is, are we exempt from those times? I wish we would, but I'm not so certain. And I'm pretty sure that I've met a lot of people who can identify with those words. Take Constanze and me, for instance, when we went to seminary, in 1991, in Heidelberg, we encountered where we were about 3,000 students, theology students. Heidelberg is considered by far probably the 
best Lutheran college in the world. Heidelberg um, is rated always in the first 50 colleges, universities in the world. But um, you cannot study Luther and Lutheran theology anywhere as well as in Heidelberg. The time we entered seminary was really interesting <coughs> because um, out of well, in, in 100 students, <coughs> there was probably one student who came from East Germany. And all those students stood out. <coughs> you can say that we were, the West German students, were no match for those East German students. It was like us being a domesticated pussycat encountering a tiger or lion. I'm not kidding. Those students would not accept any nonsense. It doesn't matter if it came from the bishops or from the professors. They would make you well, they, they would make known where they stand. So why did they have that aura of competence and authority? Now, the only reason I can come up with is they went through that fire. They were purified by that fire of persecution. Why? In East Germany, when you were a Christian, confessing Christian, you couldn't go to college. You were not allowed to get a college degree. When you were a Christian, you were banned from all high public offices. You couldn't join the merchant marines which was really a big thing, because that was one of the few things, how to travel abroad. You had a really difficult time as an athlete to compete on an international level, because you were considered to be the enemy of the state. Keep that in mind, because I will come back to that. Dear friends, it seems like that the idea of fire is associated in many, many people's minds with something that is negative, something that should be avoided at all costs, something that is destructive, especially when that fire comes from God. It's always in people's minds, what do you think about it? You know, when you think about the fire of God, what do you think? You probably think about the final judgment, right? The final days, the end times. And yet, Jesus said, and that's the good news, otherwise he wouldn't say it, I have come to bring fire on the earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. Fire, my friends, can be good or it can be bad. But good or bad, it can never be ignored. Like those East German students. In a room like this, they stood out. You could not ignore them. I tried to hide in the first four years in seminary, hoping that the uh, professor would never look at me and ask a question because I couldn't answer it. Not so with those East German students. They always had an answer. And most of the time it was pretty uncomfortable. Let's look at the positive side of the fire. It was fire that spoke to Moses in the bush. Right? Remember that story? So it does symbolize God's presence. 
It was fire, fire which led the people by night through the wilderness. Fire is a symbol of God's guidance. And the people who heard Jesus knew that. It was fire that touched the lips of the prophet Isaiah and purified him so, so he could speak the good news to his people. And it was fire that fell. I, I am a little bit, I don't know if that was a good thing or not. It was fire that fell upon the false prophets and consumed them, 400, when the prophet Elijah started to pray. I have a tendency to think, well, God only destroyed their bodies, but took care of their souls, right? Fire can cook our food or burn it beyond recognition. Fire can warm us or destroy us. Fire can mean many things, but it can never be ignored. I have come to bring fire on the earth. And how I wish it were already kindled. Our Lord wanted fire to come. And some people see that as a bad thing, especially preachers who dwell on the negative news, who like to scare people to death. I don't know what that has anything to do with the good news. But I really couldn't agree more with Jesus. I wish that there would be more fire in this place. Not only in this place, I mean in the Christian place. Fire in all of our hearts, because it is a symbol for me of God's love. Fire to burn off the trust. Fire to bring out the purity within us, you know, like gold and silver. It needs fire to be purified, right? Our faith needs to be purified. Fire to inflame people to care and to bless one another every day with all the gifts of faith. Now, one of the advantages um, of being the husband of a bishop is that um, I thought it would be um, is that Conscienza often comes home with great resources. And um, there's a, you know, bishops come in different shapes. I didn't know this. But there are some bishops, believe it or not, who are a little bit like me, right? Always a little bit off or, you know. <laughs> you never know what comes out of his mouth. <laughs> but there's one bishop who is, I think, already almost 20 years in his office. He looks like a nerd. He speaks like a nerd, but he is brilliant. And he uh, wrote something, uh, a great essay. I will not quote everything, but it f I, f I find it fits. He says, if we believe we can experience our healing, if we believe that we can experience our healing without deepening our hurt, we have understood nothing of the roots of our faith. Pretty powerful. Now, how do you connect it with the fire? To be in the fire is not pleasant, right? But usually, that's my experience. When you come out of it, you are a better person. One of the examples that I can give is, and I know some people here are in that situation, you know, when you are part-time, single, a single parent, for instance, or full-time, it's amazing what kind of burden people have to carry. And I think that's a really great place where congregations could make a difference. Why do I know this? Because I was in that, or I am in those shoes sometimes now, right? And you don't have to feel sorry for me, 
uh, because um, everything goes really smooth, always, perfectly. <laughs> but it's really interesting. Some people, you know, I, Constanze cooks, when she goes for 12 days, she cooks every meal. That is amazing. And she puts it into the freezer. And but some people don't have that luxury, right? <laughs> anyway, I don't know why I tell you this. But we need fire, <laughs> or McDonald's. <laughs> fire, and Jesus came to bring it. Fire to inflame the heart with the love of God, with the love for all that he has made, and most important, with the love for all whom he has made. You know, it's... Just think about your own context. Um, I truly believe that those words, all words of Jesus, are true. And when he talks about division, I thought about my own life. And I realized that there are some relatives among me who still don't understand what went wrong with me. They just don't get the Christian way. They thought that I am smart, right? But why am I here? And, you know, I'm glad to be here. But um, when Constanze, I just looked at uh, some wedding pictures. When we got married, our inner circle of people who came to our wedding, and I'm talking about the inner circle because we, it lasted for five days, um, was about 400 people. Do you know how many people, with how many people I'm in touch right now? Maybe two or three. Or look at my mom, for instance. My mom thought that she put everything together with me, for me. Right? She spent an arm and a leg on my education. She thought that I would end up as a medical doctor or hedge fund manager. And now he is a preacher? Really? Other people experience far worse. People are killed. People are put into prison nowadays. People are persecuted in this day, in this world, because they believe in Jesus. And I know that some people here don't experience those signs. And I think there are only two explanations. Either they are so incredibly blessed, right? Because they only have friends like you, perfect people who are compassionate about Jesus, or, or maybe they don't experience that conflict and that, that, that division because there is a lack of passion. There's no vitality when it comes to our faith. There's no life. I'm not talking about you, but I think that's a great danger in Christian churches. We have to keep that fire alive. And when I look at the Vacation Bible School, it's amazing how those kids and those volunteers kept that fire going. When you go home, remember, and that's what I want you to remember, today's gospel, for me at least, is not about God's final judgment. It is not about God's wrath. It is also about that. But it is first and foremost about God's mercy. It is about a God dividing the day from the night, light from darkness, so that we may all see and recognize who we are, God's beloved children. It is about a love overcoming hatred and division. It's about life overcoming death. 
so that we may be united in one purpose forever and ever. I hope that we will all be consumed by that fire. May God bless us. Amen. We are going to um, continue with the Apostles' Creed. Please rise, if you can, for the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. God will make a way, number 118, and you may remain standing. Treasuring your promise to hear us when we call, we pray for the church, those in need, and all of your creation. <clears throat> o oh God, you have given us your word. Like a fire, kindle its flame within and among us. Empower us for the work of breaking down walls, reconciling the divided and building faith, Lord, in your mercy. Here. You rise up to rule the nations, bless grassroots movements, and guide elected officials. Teach the nations to live with one another in harmony, Lord, in your mercy. Here. You rescue those in any need. Be with surgeons nurses, and all medical personnel who care for the sick, especially we name in our hearts. Shelter all who need homes and feed all who are hungry. Comfort those who are bereaved. Lord, in your mercy. All these things and more we ask in the name of our risen Lord, Jesus Christ, by the power of of your Holy Spirit. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took the bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me.
Again after supper he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. And we are going to um, have an open communion. If you believe in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you are all welcome. <clears throat> We are starting on this side and you are going around like the clock. <laughs>
Let me let them all Lord Jesus Christ. Let me be keep you in his face. Amen. Amen. This is Christ. may be seated. We have only a few announcements. Um, the DSU athletes meal is, or uh, yeah, the supper tonight, uh, the supper for the athletes is um, Thursday, no, Tuesday. And uh, we need some fresh produce, salads, bars, volunteers. Please stop at the table in the narthex to see how you can help. And uh, even if you don't come, please pray. Uh, for all the people who come because I think uh, we have to make sure that we are welcoming and that we let them know that we are here for them right and they may not think that they need us but they truly need us I think and not only us I mean they need us as a community that's what I mean and then um, on September 7th that's Constance's installation if you uh, are planning to come um, to worship here Saturday night, um, this worship will be called off. So th there will be no worship on September 11th. Uh, uh, on, on September 7th, thank you. And um, if you want to go to that installation, you have to go to the CIDIT web page. Um, and you have to sign up for it. RSVP. So please come if you feel like it's important or if you have time. Anything else? Anything else? Yeah. Remind uh, leg service next uh, Sunday is last one. Yes. La next Sunday already? Next wow. Sunday, yeah. That makes me cry. The end of summer. <laughs> so next Sunday, uh, please worship with us at the lake if you want to, if you live there or if you want to help out. Thank you so much for coming and uh, make sure that you will see that veil. Uh, if it's not, what? Like, don't forget Lexi's bridal shower. Yes, this afternoon. this afternoon. Thank you so much. Two o'clock, um, we will have Lexi's bridal shower. And it's the last till four or five, I think. <laughs> right? Because I have, no, I have. If we have the bridal shower today, I have, thank you so much, I have also to go to Bethel. I think Bethel has a worship. I have to go there. <laughs> I have to check. Thank you. Too many balls in the air. <laughs> anyway, um, please come. Um, our sending song is What a Mighty God We Serve, number 99.